Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another how to draw video. Did a video a while back called how to draw a realistic eye. Uh, a lot of people liked it, but a lot of people pointed out, quite rightly, that it was not absolutely realistic in every way. So this time I am going to challenge myself to do a photorealistic eye. Uh, one that really should be absolutely accurate to a real human eye. So let's go ahead in here and start working on the shape. Um, I should say that this is a uh, uh, an eye taken from a face that was turning just a little bit away. Uh, and as such, it creates a sort of interesting eye shape. Uh, I'm leaving just a little bit of a gap here. And this has to do with... Um, photorealism you know you don't end up with lines in real life um, uh, a lot of times there's just a blending of um, tones between one space and another so for me to sit here and do an absolutely hard uh, bold black line around this eye would not be photorealist and I should warn you right now that there's going to be a lot of uh, time lapse in this video just because photorealism takes time. And uh, I, uh, <laughs> if I did line by line and showed every line that I drew, this video would go on for an hour <laughs> or something like that. So you're going to see me zip through a lot of things. But I thought I'd at least try to do this first part uh, real time and... Uh, give you some tips. So this is the absolute sort of outside shape of the of, of the skin surrounding the eye. Uh, and over here I'm going to start to put in the tear duct. And um, you know it should be said that every eye is different and so this you know this is uh, comes from one photo that I studied uh, pretty intensely. Uh, I'm sure different people have different shaped tear ducts and so forth. But one thing that I noticed that sort of surprised me was uh, to what degree uh, this line is coming down and sort of hooking down here. That's not the way I imagined. And that's the thing about drawing from life that helps you um, become a better artist is you, uh, you stop drawing the things the way you imagined them to be and you draw them the way they really are. Your mind can play tricks on you. You sort of, uh, if you try to draw your memory of, uh, of what you think something looks like, it ends up being quite different from what it really is. So we have the shape of the eye and uh, now I'm um, gonna get into the uh, the iris itself and this is pretty uh, crucial in terms of um, drawing a relaxed eye is getting the getting the top part of the iris sufficiently covered by the upper eyelid. If you are seeing the entire iris you've got a very bugged out, shocked looking eye. And uh, so anytime you're drawing the eyes of a character uh, in a comic book or whatever, you're going to pay real close attention to to what degree this upper edge of the iris is covered um, by the upper eyelid. The more it is covered, the more relaxed the person looks. The less it is covered, the more bugged out the eye is going to appear. And in this particular photo that I studied, um, the bottom of the iris, uh, there was just a tiny bit of a gap um, between the bottom of the uh, iris and the bottom eyelid. Uh, just going to indicate now the pupil. And uh, depending on what photo you look at, you, you may see slightly different uh, sizes here, you know, dilated pupils and so forth. Um, but it seems that in a relaxed, typical eye, uh, it looks like it's uh, considerably less than a third of the distance across uh, going in from the outside edge of the iris. I'm going to now uh, get the upper, an indication of the upper eyelid fold. And this, you're going to see a lot of variety from one eye to another, different people having heavier eyelids and so forth. But one interesting little thing over here is with this, this uh, line comes across here, and there's sort of a second line. And I've seen this even in manga drawings. People uh, actually will capture the accuracy of this, that there's a second line uh, created by the fold of flesh as it tucks in under um, the upper part of the eye. 
Now, one of the things that I, I got kind of wrong uh, in this last video that was uh, supposedly realistic was the eyelashes. And I'm going to try to make up for that this time. But um, again, I'm going to have to kick it into time lapse um, to, to keep this video from going on forever. So I'm going to do this eyelash stuff in time lapse, but I'm going to come back and explain a little bit about what I did. Okay, so just quickly to uh, explain about things here, the, uh, the eyelashes you find when you study very carefully a photograph of an actual eye, you really come to appreciate how compli and complicated uh, the uh, eyelashes are in terms of the different directions they're going in. Um, what I notice is that uh, over here on the right hand side, you've got lots and lots of eyelashes curving off. Um, to the right and as you reach the center of the iris you, you will reach a point where they are coming kind of straight at you and that becomes a real challenge uh, artistically to uh, to capture that uh, the, some of them kind of become almost diagonal lines and just a few as you head towards the tear duct um, kind of trailing off just a few of them I'm finding curving in the opposite direction um, off to the left let me go ahead and do the lower eyelashes and then come back and talk about those. Okay, so when you get down to the lower eyelashes, um, accuracy really pays off and you begin to see uh, how delicate they really are. Uh, if you get a nice, good, clear photograph, you can really see each individual eyelash. Um, I'm finding in the photo that I studied that they don't really begin to appear until quite a bit in uh, from the tear duct. Um, very delicate over here in this area. Uh, and then as you go along, um, they increase in number, but they never get anywhere near as heavy as the upper eyelash. And you will see this area in here is eventually really going to get colored in uh, black because there's just this mass of, uh, uh, of eyelashes up here. You never really get that, not with this person's eye anyway, uh, down here at the bottom. And um, just, yeah, attention to detail is really going to pay off if you want a photorealistic eye. Um, really trying to capture each individual eyelash the, and, and the direction that it's going in and so forth. Um, and so much of learning how to draw uh, realistically is learning how to see accurately. Um, not drawing what you think an eye looks like, but actually studying uh, it super closely and only drawing what is really there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom in a little and get into the details of the iris. Again, all in time lapse, but then I'll come back and uh, talk about what I've done. <laughs> Well, you can see uh, how much time I put into slowly building this up, um, starting uh, light and gradually building darker. I'm probably even going to uh, continue adding more to this by the time I'm done with the drawing, but um, hopefully you get a sense of uh, how important it is just to put the time in and uh, train your eye on exactly what you see in your source photograph, um, and um, no matter how odd it may look to you, uh, try to render it into your drawing. Um, one interesting thing that's happening here is we're getting a reflection of the upper eyelid and lashes down here. Um, and, you know, photorealism, you start to get into these just uh, insane little details, but those are what make the drawing in the end uh, if you want to go that far towards photorealism. I'm going to go ahead and pull um, out again and start to get into adding shading to the uh, uh, area surrounding the eye. Um, 
Again, going to have to do it in time lapse. Sorry about that, but um, I can see that I've already put, what is it, 32 minutes uh, into this had I done it uh, live. Uh, and so let's go ahead and uh, move on to that next part of the drawing, and hopefully I can give you some tips uh, based on what you see. <laughs> In the final stretch here and um, the truth is <clears throat> if I really wanted to go photorealist on, on this I can keep going another hour. Um, just fine-tuning, fine-tuning, fine-tuning. Uh, and uh, just one, a couple of things to say here. Uh, one technique here that I was using uh, and the pencil here is a Dixon Ticonderoga. Um, uh, as kids tend to get really obsessed with what tool, what pencil are you using? Um, use whatever pencil works for you, you know? This is like a number two <laughs> ordinary pencil. I'm a big believer in everyone finding their own favorite tools. Uh, but in any case, when I want to go really light, I pull way, way back towards like the eraser and come at the paper from the side. This way you can put very, very little pressure on the lead and create just very light shading. When it comes time for precision, obviously, I choke up right down to the point. Uh, people comment that I hold my pencil strangely, and they are right. I hold my <laughs> pencil very strangely. But like I say, um, everyone find your own way. Um, what happened actually, I was in college and I had a motor scooter accident and my thumb got completely smashed to pieces and thank goodness they were able to put it back together but that is why I hold my pencil in a very strange way. Um, so let's go ahead and wrap this up um, and I just want to say before anyone else says this um, because with photorealism you reach a stage where um, you kinda have to say what's the point? You, you have turned yourself into a photocopy machine, and um, you are able to replicate a photo. So what? And you know what? I think that's a legitimate criticism, and that is why I don't spend a lot of time sitting around doing photorealist drawings. Um, but it's very good exercise, first of all. Um, teaches you to see accurately, which is hugely important in drawing from life. And if you get into it, there is a fine art to photorealism. Uh, look at the work of Chuck Close and other people who take photorealism to the level of truly fine art. Uh, I have not done that here today, <laughs> but um, that's kind of uh, why I decided to at least one time uh, attempt to do a, a video of this sort. I hope you found it useful. I realize it was really at m uh, a lot of stages more of a watch me draw video rather than a how to draw video. I'm sorry about that, but that's just the realities of photorealism. I would truly have turned this into, what, 54 minutes uh, a 54 minute video which would have put everyone to sleep um, so anyway I'm gonna put the pencil down I hope you found this useful thanks for watching this video thanks uh, to anyone who orders my books Mickey Falls uh, or pre-orders uh, Brody's Ghost which is coming out in July I greatly appreciate your support I hope you liked this video and I will be back with another one real soon <laughs>